Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it fragile balance because that seems to be what this market is or where this market is at. It's, uh, it's doing a balancing act here between uh, kind of a high wire act, if you will, between further corrective action and rolling over into free fall. Okay, when you look at the Dow Industrials, Look at this trend line that we've been uh, that we're kind of been touching several times, and I started from November, November lows into the the December lows, and then we came down this last week, and we were right there on Thursday, and I thought, here we go, we're going to smash right through it, and then we slightly went further and then reversed back up, and we're going to talk about that in more detail in a minute, but we're in this fragile balance, and we'll see how much longer. This is going to go on. Okay, so let's take a look. I want to start off here looking at the side-by-side -side view of the uh, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. So for the week, let me move this over a little bit, the uh, Dow was down 937 points. So just when you, you look at the, the two-week move that we had over here, let me get rid of the crosshairs for a minute. The two-week move that we had, you would have thought, okay, here we go. We're breaking out to new highs, etc. Not so fast. We didn't even have one point above the prior week. I mean, we opened down and just continued to sell off and kind of a negative close in, from my perspective when I look at this, closing below the low of the prior week. So we'll see what kind of follow through do we get to the downside. No guarantees, but it seems to me that whenever you do that, it has a tendency to, uh, to be a sign of weakness, and we'll see what kind of further weakness we, we get here in the Dow Industrials. That's what I'm expecting. When you look over here at the S&P, it's not, not nearly as negative in terms of the picture, and it was only down 26.5 points for the week. But uh, the LA Wave picture on this, it hasn't really changed. I mean, it just continues to be, you know, working its way lower in terms of the wave count. Over here, in terms of the NASDAQ 100, it was actually up 77 points for the week. So the NASDAQ 100 had been leading us down the whole way. And now it's not surprising if all of a sudden the Dow starts to play some catch up and even the S&P with uh, the kind of move that we've had in the NASDAQ 100. Anyway, that's where we're sitting. Oh, I want to take one quick look at the Dow versus the industrials versus the transports. Transports were down eight points for this last week. Now, this is the way I looked at where it opened and closed this little doji candle. It's not really within the body of the prior week, so it's not truly in a harami cross, kind of like what we got over here with the Dow Industrials. But I got to say, it does make me look at this and think, well, it looks like a potential turning point or, or pause, if you will. We see, we'll see if we get this to come down this coming week and take out this last week's low as a part of this move. So uh, that that could be interesting. We, we, over here on the, the industrials, we got this a couple of times. So we got one here, we got one here. So we'll see if that's the kind of move that we get this coming week. All right, that's the Dow and Dow Industrials and the transports. Um, let's go back and take a look at the Dow Industrials. My focus today is going to be on the industrials, and then I'm going to take a look at a couple of indicators and take a look at the dollar index and then look at oil, gold, and silver. All right, so here's this high wire act that we've been doing and sitting with. Let's take a look at the LA Wave picture. Here's what I've got. I think that we are starting down. Uh, we're definitely lagging, you know, the other end of major indices, and the S&P and the, um, the NASDAQ. But it looks to me like one, two, complete, and that we're working our way down in the third minute wave. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to find the first five waves within the first minor wave, minor wave one of intermediate wave three. So we've got a lot of waves to, to flesh out here because we're going to get five waves, five minor waves within intermediate wave three. Let's take a look. Let's go back and look at the weekly view so you see a little bit bigger picture from a higher level in terms of what we're looking at. Um, this is a path forward, okay? This is what I'm looking for to work its way down in an impulsive manner, 
They can't overlap in here in a wave three. And if I had to say, okay, what am I projecting? Yeah, I'm projecting down into this territory here. Let me get my crosshairs again. For intermediate wave three, based on one, two, as long as wave two, intermediate wave two holds right here at this high, then I'm projecting a normal length wave three is gonna be down here around 22,900, okay? So that's as far as I'm projecting. Again, this is, these moves right here all depend on how this plays out, okay? And the wave structure here all depends on how things play out in here, but I'm looking for five waves within intermediate wave three. And yes, I expect it to break down out of this channel, this kind of a base channel that we've got here. And, uh, and that's the picture I've got on the Dow right now. That's kind of the higher level on a weekly. And then when we take a look at the, uh, the daily view, looking for this to come back down, take out uh, Friday's low and break this trend line and uh, resume the move to the downside and start to get some acceleration. And then if I take a look at the what I call my hourly view, which is my 65 minute view, this is how it plays out from the uh, for the last week. OK, so the 13th was Friday, the previous Friday. Right. OK, so that was the high right here on the previous Friday, middle of the day. And we came down and here's where we closed. Uh, no, it's the 17th. Here's where we closed right here, actually. No, that is, sorry, <laughs> that is the last hour of the day on Friday the 13th. Here's where it closed, the previous week. That's right, because remember we gapped down at the open for this week and then we just continue to sell off. So it looks to me like we've had five waves down for the first minuet level wave and then we're in a small wave two pullback. The real question is how much are we going to get? If you take a look at wave two versus one, and, and say, okay, well, here's some targets. Yeah, it may continue to push up in here. It doesn't have to. I would look for a minimum of a move to 33,481. But yeah, it could push up into this 50 to 61.8% move. A little more continuation to the upside in here as a part of a small wave two. And then roll over and resume that. I mean, this could all happen on, Friday, on Monday. I mean, we'll see. Okay, so that's where we're sitting with the Dow Industrials right now, looking for a little bit more of a move to the upside, complete this small wave two, and then come back over and roll over hard in wave three. Okay, let's take a look at uh, one of our indicators. Okay, here's the percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average. So you can see how extreme it got back up in August. And then when it came down and it bottomed in September, you know, I'm talking about above the 90% level for a few days, got below the 10% level down here in September into the beginning of October, got back up above the 90% level for two days, no, actually three days, it actually closed above 93 days in early December. And then now we're coming back down. We bounced, got down around this 50% level, oscillated around it, here in the, at the end of uh, the second half of December, bounced up some, and now we came down hard Wednesday and Thursday and a little bounce back up in here on Friday. So you can see, yeah, we're going to gyrate around a little bit as we work our way down, but my expectation is that this is going to continue to come down again. Okay, so that's where we sit with that indicator, sitting at 61.4% of the stocks in the S&P 500 are above their 50-day moving average. Let's take a look at the dollar index. Okay, here's the weekly view I've got of the dollar index. So it was down in eh, 19 cents, let's call it, on this last week. A little bit of a move. I think that there's a pretty good chance that this fifth wave is done. And I do think we've got five waves down. And so what does that imply? That implies that this corrective pattern is not finished. I think we're going to get a, another counter trend move in here, possibly a B wave. If we've gotten five, this could play out like a zigzag, a five, three, five with further more to go. But we're going to get a counter trend move up in here and a B wave is what I'm looking for. So we'll see if we get that. You can see on a weekly, we are definitely oversold on the RSI. We definitely got the divergence up here at the top. 
Let's take a look at the daily view real quick and you can see what I'm looking at in terms of the five waves down. So the real question is, is this, is this low on Wednesday it or do we have a little bit more to go? We'll watch and see how that plays out. Right now I've got this labeled as if that's low. If this isn't the low, let's put it that way, this way. If this isn't the low, we're very close. Okay, so that is the picture on the dollar index. Um, let's take a look at USL uh, oil. Okay, so this is what I use for my proxy on oil. It is the United States 12-month oil in here, uh, USL. And right now, I think we're working our way down in a corrective pattern. And what needs to happen is this needs to roll over. I think we've got a little zigzags going on. I think we've got an ending diagonal that has the potential to develop here for wave C. And so that's what I'm watching. We were up 71 cents for the week. And when we look at the daily view over here, we we're up 44 cents on, uh, on Friday. So, you know, kind of jumping around a little bit. Big downdraft move on Wednesday, no follow through. Did not take out the low on Thursday. And then we kind of bounced up a little bit on Friday. So we'll see if this is going to hold in here and, uh, and come back down like I'm expecting because this looks to me very zigzaggy-ish three-wave type of move that uh, that's why I'm looking for a three-wave move down in here for the uh, third wave. But uh, that is the picture that I've got on oil. We'll see if that plays out. And um, West Texas Intermediate closed at uh, on the near term futures closed at $81.76. Okay, let's take a look at GLD. Okay, gold. GLD was up 53 cents for the week. Um, and let's see, up down 62 cents on Friday. So I still look, I'm still holding this bearish view in here of gold, but there is an alternate count and I'll show you that in a minute. The the count I've got in here says that this B wave is just about finished. We're definitely overbought up here. We're sitting at 77.2 on the RSI on a weekly basis. And I'm looking for this to come back down. And, you know, what am I talking about? I'm talking about a big, uh, large, flat pattern when you take this all the way out from 2011 out to, you know, the projected path of a big A, B, C. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. And the frustrating thing is that back in here really was trying to get into a bullish mode, but then it just kept failing and it, it broke down out of here. Now, the, I'll show you the alternate count on here is this, is, is uh, this type of a pattern, the bull scenario that says, yeah, okay, from, from the low here in December 2015, after this big corrective move of a WXY, down from the high that we're off into a five wave move and that all of this gyration is wave four, which is a pretty big wave four. But it's possible that we are off and running in a primary wave five. OK, so we'll just have to watch and see what develops. Now, when I look over, let me go back to this bearish view. When I go to silver, which is SLV is what I use, here's where silver is. And it's just not getting the follow through. And it's, it's uh, you know, I'm staying with the bearish view because it just hasn't acted all that strong at all in here. It was down 31 cents for the week and up 6 cents on Friday when we go to the daily view over here. Here's the other thing I'm watching. You know, this little trend line, kind of, you know, like a miniature view of what I showed on the Dow Industrials and uh, watching to see if this is going to break down through this uh, this trend line or not. But that's what I'm expecting because I think the high is in in here. One thing I didn't show you, I don't think, is over here on the daily of the gold, here's where silver peaked. It peaked, or SLV did, on January 3rd. Okay, so all of this move up in here is not confirmed by SLV. So it's a question, who's leading who? Is, is gold leading silver higher? Or is silver not confirming and, and showing gold the path lower? Well, kind of leaning to the latter, that, uh, that silver is showing the path lower. And it seems like that's what it's been doing. Um, I want to say it broke 
broke down first. What was this, September? I see this was September 11th. Let's take a look. Nope, wrong one. Sorry, here. Silver and bearish. Yeah, well, I don't have the same same exact pattern that we have, but I mean, it was it was definitely trending lower first. I mean, look at this breakdown that occurred back in June. So that's what I'm staying with. If I had to say which one's leading which, I would say silver looks like it's leading gold uh, to the downside, and we'll see if that pattern continues to hold or not. Okay, that is it for today. Uh, we'll see what kind of, you know, never a dull moment with this market, with all these markets, actually. Uh, we'll see what happens this coming week. As the earnings parade continues, I know we have Microsoft and a whole bunch of other biggies. And then a week from Thursday, we've got, you know, Apple and uh, Amazon. And I think Tesla is this coming Wednesday uh, also. So that's it for this video. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to johenches.net. Check out the website and check out the membership. Everyone have a great rest of the weekend and a wonderful week. We'll talk to you on the next video.